Steph. What's up? Are you still streaming, man, or are you done now? Hope all is well. Happy Monday. Hopefully everyone's weekend was good. Mine was. Goes by really fast, usually. Between working and trying to spend time with Sammy. But it's always good. We went for a nice little bike ride on, I think, Saturday morning before work. So that was nice. This thing looks like it's a little bit sideways, so I'm going to fix this. Stay. <laughs> that was bugging me. You're done for now, but you're still playing. Awesome. Did you get any wins? Yeah, thanks, man. All is well. And just so you know, your cookies are on the way. So hopefully those will get there pretty soon. And hopefully the customs doesn't have to go through them either. But I got the guy at the post office to help me. So on what to declare and stuff like that. So hopefully everything goes well. And today we are making some awesome fresh Thai food. Such a good thing to eat during the summer. Let me just let the dog out. Typical posh. Just gotta scratch the door start as soon as I start streaming. <laughs> And then I also went to the hardware store this morning, grabbed some more seeds for the garden because we do have some stuff that opened up. So I did pull out the fava beans, which take up quite a bit of room and also the bush beans, which give us like those nice purple, yellow or green beans because those are all done. They're not producing anything else. So we have about two thirds of one of those boxes to fill. But you also have to be aware of what you're planting for the winter to make sure that you can actually grow it. So I got four things today. I got some really nice kind of scallion onions called Apaches. So those are the ones with the purple bulb. Really, really nice. Those are supposed to grow great in the fall and the winter. So I'm going to seed those probably tomorrow. Kind of did all the dirty work today and seeding is like one of the easiest things literally just put the seeds in the soil and water it and hope for the best <laughs> and the good thing is is like this whole pack that has 255 seeds is only three dollars and 20 cents and i got mine so this is from west coast seeds so the thing about getting seeds that are local to your area it, it means that they're gonna grow better because these seeds have been developed and obviously seeded from your area so you know that they're gonna gonna grow well hey oh matt yeah the badges we finally finished those up how do you like them man how was your weekend and i'm actually happy you're here because saute is something that you guys eat where you live, right? It's been adopted over there, which is really cool. And the other seed pack I got was this really nice kind of purple sprouting broccoli. Yeah, Indonesians. That is so awesome. I'm so jealous of you. <laughs> and two greens to plant. So I got another kind of kale called Lachinado. And in Alberta, we called this dinosaur kale. And it's quite nice. It's not as chewy as the other types of kale. The leaf is more flat. So it's really nice to work with. Makes an awesome Caesar salad for sure. You actually got peanut sauce today. That is so awesome. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Hello, oh crap. How's it going today? Oh, you're very welcome, Death. I mean, that's the least I can do. And you know what? Shipping was only $11 for those cookies. So that can be a thing for me to give as an incentive for the tier three subs. To me, that still makes sense. 
if I food costs that out. So I might start working on that for tier three subs. Onionies, what's up? Yeah, curly kale mofos. Okay, so the last seed I got today, mustard greens. And this one is called Mizuna. So it kind of looks like a frisee leaf, right? And this is one of the more mild mustard greens. I think the darker purple you go, the stronger the mustard will taste. And these you can just put into your salad greens like usual. And I think they actually taste better than arugula or rocket as it's called in Europe. And like this, this pack has 560 seeds. So that's a lot of seeds for a long time. And I think the seeds are good. Yeah, usual seed life three years. So you can keep them for up to three years. But I don't you even use all of those. Hello, Opterix. How are you? What's up, Timothy? You're new in here. Man, I love chicken saute and peanut sauce. Like, I would put peanut sauce on so many things. Oh, Matt has 550 seeds yet. Yeah, the countdown starts today. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Opterix, just so you know, you got some cookies on the way, man. Another three hour math meeting. The heck school hasn't started yet. That's BS. Okay, so the salad roll recipe I got from an inspiration from a local magazine called Eat Magazine. And look how nice these ones look. I think they even put like blueberries in there. I'll have to still grab a beet from outside, but I got a lot of different vegetables to put in there. I don't know if we're going to do any rice noodles. I think we're just going to load them with veg and keep the rice paper on the outside. And then we're going to make this nice clear sauce for the salad rolls to dip, but obviously salad rolls are good with peanut sauce too. So saute and salad rolls, really good combo for the summertime. Yeah, I'm pumped, Opterix. I'm very curious to how long it's going to take before you get them and how the quality of the cookies is going to be. Welcome in, Matt. How was the weekend? Oh, and just so everyone knows, I have updated all of the bones from Friday's trivia. So I've given everyone the points that won last week on Friday. I think there was six or seven of you. So if you're wondering if they're there, they are, and you can gamble if you want to. The recipe is from a Meg, but I did post it in Discord. I found, which is really cool, they have the magazine actually online too that you can just flip through. So it's on page 50 to 51. Did I ship you your salt yet? No, not yet, Matt. Not yet. I wonder if it switches to USPS when it gets to US. Yeah, who knows? I don't know what's going to happen there. Magazines usually cut down on words. Well, I'm just using this recipe as kind of inspiration as to what we can put into the salad rolls. Because summertime, things are so colorful. So why wouldn't we take advantage of that? I know I'm wearing earrings and it's kind of annoying now my ears are itchy because I usually don't wear earrings, but I'm going to struggle through this. What's up, in dog? Yeah, Friday trivia, you missed it. I'm going to try and do it for the next two Fridays, though, as well. Because we did it two weeks ago. Yes, Matt, exactly. Recipes are only guidelines. There are no rules. Ear tour, never. Don't do it. Okay, so the Thai chicken saute recipe and the peanut sauce are both off of Serious Eats. I love that website. I think I use that website the most when I go to find a recipe that I want to make. I've never had any problems with their recipes. And I feel like they've gone through some rigorous testing. 
<laughs> the fingers give away. No, that hasn't happened yet. But we are going to be doing some uh, chicken butchery today, so it might get weird. We had some awesome steak and potatoes on Friday. Dinner with your piano tuner and his wife. That is cool. Wet website, Serious Eats, aka The Food Lab. And they do have a cookbook too, which I have not gotten yet. Probably should. But the like the internet just makes it so easy to find a recipe and not even have to buy cookbooks. It's it's not as fun anymore, I don't think. Who won the apron in the end? So do you remember Flexerd? And I'm happy you brought this up because I don't think that he wants it, to be honest. Like I sent it to him to Scotland, paid for the shipping, which wasn't that cheap. Not gonna lie. And it's been sitting there for like three weeks in the post office because he's not picking it up because there's a customs charge on it. So we might actually get the apron sent back to me and I'll do another giveaway. Uh, who knows? I've just been tr checking the tracking number and seeing what's going on and nothing has changed. So we will see. Is the website work appropriate? Yes. Marvin and Hamlish Piano. Is that supposed to be a really good brand? Yeah, go to Scotland and pick that ish up. <laughs> if you get there first, you win. The one who guesses the tracking number gets the apron. Oh my gosh. Oh, Matt. Are you alive today? Serious Eats. It's a well-known American brand. That is so cool. Okay, let's do a little bit of fun facts before we start. Just on the saute and the peanut sauce. There's not too much online about salad rolls. You are zoning out. <laughs> okay, so saute is a dish of seasoned, skewered, and grilled meat served with sauce. And who doesn't love grilled meat? Like there's just so something so easy about it. And it's so good. Like the flavor that you get from the grill as well, that cannot be replicated in an oven ever. Yes, that is awesome, Omat. Yeah, they're seriously the best. I probably use at least three or four recipes from that site per week. <laughs> Bye, on your knees. Thanks for popping in for the first little bit. And have a wonderful sleep. Hopefully I'll see you later this week. So, saute is a dish of Southeast Asia, particularly Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand. And I can vouch for that, is when I was in Indonesia and Thailand, you could find saute anywhere. And it's very inexpensive to eat. Probably one of my favorite things too. I mean, when you're eating street meat, I think having things grilled is definitely the better option to go to make sure it's safe and well cooked. And peanut sauce, it, I mean, for nourishment, it was pretty good for sure. It's nice and filling. You get your healthy fats in there. And peanuts do have quite a bit of protein too. And sometimes it's spicy, which is great. You even saw stands when you were in Brunei, right next to Malaysia. Cool. Thank you for the follow. I'm not gonna say that you can't troll me. Might be Monday, but I'm not falling for that one, guys. Okay, so saute may consist of diced or sliced chicken. We're gonna do slices today. Probably about half an inch thick, maybe a little bit thinner. You could also do goat, mutton, which is an older lamb, beef, pork, fish, and also tofu is an option for those that don't eat meat.
And then bamboo skewers are what is typically used. So I have some of those today. And the one thing when you use skewers is you need to soak them for about half an hour in cold water before you use them. And that way you're not gonna get little slivers coming off of the skewers when you put the meat on. Cause you don't wanna be eating wood when you're eating your meat when it's cooked. So that really helps to get away from that. Yeah, you know what, sometimes I'm just in a rush and totally forget to soak them, but I do really notice the difference if I don't do that. Yeah, that's the other point as well, Omat, especially if you're grilling. Having the skewers soaked ahead of time is obviously gonna help them not burn on the ends. You the best, Omat. So yes, saute is typically grilled or barbecued over wood or charcoal. Sammy said if he's home early enough today, he will start up the charcoal for us. But otherwise, if you don't even have a grill, you can do it under your broiler, just so you get that direct flame onto it. I guess if you have an electric oven, you don't have a flame on your broiler, but that will be the hottest heat that you can get. And I think you will be able to get that little bit of browning action that we're looking for because there is a little bit of sugar in the marinade. So that's going to help with browning too. You're a saute specialist. I believe it. And I respect that. You have a smoker mat. Oh, imagine smoked chicken saute. Now that's on a whole new level. Yeah, so much better with charcoal, it's true. I do really wanna get one of those little Japanese charcoal grills, because apparently the charcoal burns really clean and doesn't really give off that much fumes. So you can actually use it inside if you're careful enough, I think. Yeah, hibachi, exactly. I think it's worth the money because they're not even that expensive. Yeah, I think it's called a hibachi. Okay. So saute can be served in various sauces. However, most often they're served in a combination of soy and peanut sauce. So we'll be making a spicy peanut sauce today. We won't make it too spicy. But you know what? Look what I picked today, guys. The first two peppers <laughs> from the garden look how cute they are so a little habanero it might be small but it's gonna be so spicy i'm sure and then this is a little portugal pepper these are like the first two and i find that the first peppers that start really don't grow as big as they should because the rest of the peppers on the plant now are like at least twice the size of these so we got those. I was thinking of putting a little bit of that fresh red pepper into the peanut sauce. Cause I think it's gonna be nice and floral too. Yeah, 40 bucks for a hibachi. You really can't go wrong. The data's exhausted. What? What is happening? So saute originated on the Indonesian island of Java. It's available almost anywhere in Indonesia where it's become a national dish. That's cool. It's also popular in many other Southeast Asian countries. In Sri Lanka, it has become a staple of the local diet as a result of the influences from the local Malay community. Okay, so here comes the Japanese stuff. So close analogs are yakitori. So that's what they typically use the hibachi for is yakitori, which is Japanese style grilled meat. Very, very popular there as well. And then if you're in Turkey or the Middle East, you can get shish kebabs, which is their version of grilled meat. Yeah, Java. <laughs> okay, I think that's all we're going to get into for the saute. Let's get into the peanut sauce. Don't skip the Netherlands part. Okay. I was going to hit it for the peanut sauce, but I'll go back. 
I got you. Since you're here, oh, Matt, of course I'll narrate it for you. Do, do, do. Can I find it, though? There we go. Yay. Are these, t are these questions on the test on Friday? No. I don't make it that difficult. <laughs> I usually just do, like, cooking terms and stuff like that that I think you guys should know. And if you don't know them, then we learn them together. Trying to snatch your sleepy friend's phone. I love that. Okay, so Netherlands saute. It is fully adapted in Dutch everyday cuisine. That is unreal. That is still so crazy to me. Owed to their shared colonial history, saute is an Indonesian food that has become an integral part of Dutch cuisine. Pork and chicken sautés are almost solely served with spicy peanut sauce. How do you pronounce it, Omat? Ein saute? <laughs> They're readily available in snack bars and supermarkets. Yeah, you have to watch all week to get the right answers. Imagine, Matt. Man, that trivia would be rough. People would be like scrambling to look at the old VODs. <laughs> oh yeah, house to yourself, the best. Just like rice to fell. What's that one, Opterix? Sushi, thanks for the host. Okay, so... Versions of saute can also use goat meat and then sweet soy sauce is available in Indian Indonesian restaurants and takeaways Pork or chicken saute in peanut sauce with salad and french fries is popular in the local pubs nice mix Fries and peanut sauce. I'm sure is deadly So vegetarians who order a gado gado, which is Indonesian salad of slightly boiled, blanched, or steamed vegetables and hard boiled eggs, boiled potato, and you could also have fried tofu. That is served with peanut sauce. I remember having that in Indonesia and it was actually really good. I was like, eh, it's so hot today. I don't really want any meat. So I got that, which had the eggs, so it still had the protein, and it was really, really good. Like I said, I would eat peanut sauce with a lot of different things. If you were able to pair a sambal to this, it would be epic. Oh, totally. Yeah, sambal is a great addition to the peanut sauce. Yeah, wait, if it's a veggie, why does it have an egg? Because some vegetarians eat eggs. It's called lacto ovo. I know there's different types of vegetarians. Okay, Omat. Oh, another favorite in Dutch snack bars is the saute croquette. So a croquette made with a peanut sauce and shredded meat ragu. What? That though sounds amazing. And you guys have gotten really creative with your saute. I'm impressed. Anyone else eat croquettes before? Because they are really delicious. Are the croquettes still made from potato, oh, Matt? <laughs> Put that ish on everything. Okay, so order of prep today. It's not a very hard stream, and I thought I would throw in some homemade dill pickles today since I've been picking a lot of cucumbers from the garden. So we're going to make a couple jars of those as well. It's pickle in season guys. They have breadcrumbs on the outside. Yeah. Crunchy on the outside, gooey on the inside. Delicious. And if you're not careful, they were, will burn your mouth. Terrifying. Okay, so first things first, this is the most important thing. We got to marinate our chicken earlier rather than later. 
so that it can absorb all the flavors that we want. So we'll probably let that sit for around two hours and then we'll skewer it later. It's easier for the marinade to absorb when they're not skewered. So leave them for a few hours and then skewer them much closer to when you plan on cooking this. When's the last time you played croquet? Oh my gosh, I loved croquet when I was young. I always set up little things in the backyard. I think my grandma and my grandpa were the first ones to show me. I would say at least 12, 15 years ago. They will always burn your mouth, even when you think you waited long enough. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're like, I regret this decision. And I think after we marinate the chicken is when we're gonna make the pickles because the prep for the salad rolls is really, really simple. All we have to do is cut up a bunch of veg really nice and delicate. And then we don't wanna roll the salad rolls too early because they can get a little bit soggy. So just having that veg prepped up ahead of time will really help us to make the rolls faster later on. Once all the veg is prepped, we can make our sauces. So we'll make the peanut sauce as well as the, I call it the nuoc sham. I know that's Vietnamese, but that's like the sweet and sour fish sauce to dip in. That's clear. We'll put a little bit of chili in there as well. And then I think after the sauces, we'll be able to make the salad rolls up. I think making them maybe an hour ahead of time is okay. But I know when I've made them and let them sit overnight, they kind of do get a little soggy and they will fall apart faster. You gots to get some sleep now. Okay, dude. That sounds good. Please post pictures online. You know I always do, man. I think Instagram is definitely where I post most of the pictures, whether it is like on my timeline or on my story. You know how it is. You wanna see that saute on Instagram when you wake up? Yeah, typical. <laughs> Love it. Good night, dude. Thanks for being here. And I hope you have a good week if I don't see you until later on. Yeah, that's a nice way to wake up. <laughs> okay, that is it guys. So we'll make our salad rolls, then skewer the chicken. If Sammy's home, we'll grill it. So we'll probably do multi-twitch. If not, then we'll put them under the broiler. And then we'll eat. That's it. Pretty simple day. Hey Chance, what's up? How are you doing? Hey, PM. What's up, nachos? Okay, so first things first, we gotta take apart our chicken. I have two whole chickens here that we have to debone. We will freeze the two carcasses for making stock or soup or whatever. And then we have to slice up. I'm gonna use both the chicken breast and the chicken legs because dark meat for saute is really good too. And I think it stays more juicy, obviously, than the chicken breast, which is more lean. So we're gonna do a mix of both. Nice Opteryx. So Betty picked all of the apples last week. I think that was Friday's stream. So we have probably 60 pounds of apples that I have to process. And I think we're gonna end up investing in a like cider press. I know they're really expensive, but we don't really plan on leaving here. So I think it'll be worth the investment after processing the apples every season. <laughs> Not much here, just trying to find air. It is so smoky outside today, you guys. Like we can actually smell it. You really can't see far today. It really got soft in here. It's bad. Like I went into town today and as soon as I drove up the hill into town, I was like, oh my gosh, this is insanity. Harry, it has been months. You're going to school right away, aren't you? If that's the last thing I remember. 
you telling me? Okay, pulled chickens. Woohoo! I don't know why this skin always gets ripped off one of them. I feel so bad for it. You're planning an Irish red ale. Yum! That sounds good. Yeah, she be thick. Exactly, Jesse Zebra. Too thick for their own skin. The struggle. I want to just set up my station here. You're not a fan of super bitter IPAs. Yeah, me neither. But there are some IPAs that are like double IPAs. And the flavor is actually pretty surprising when you drink it. Like it's not as strong as you initially would think it would be. So it really just takes trying a bunch of beers to find out what you like. You start college next month. Exciting. So are you moving away from home then? Or are you able to stay at home while you go to college? <laughs> if he was a girl, you would have scooped him up. That's hilarious. Okay. I think my knife is nice and sharp now. Ba -da -da -da. Time to get into it, my friends. It's 3.15 already. And I'm also just getting my freezer bag ready for these chicken carcasses. It's just in town where you live. Oh, you live in Manchester. I've been there. It's actually really lovely. Once again, guys, these are our organic chickens. I feel like that's important. They're not raised with any antibiotics or hormones. And I think when you eat food that's raised organically, you will notice a difference in how you feel. That might sound crazy, but I think it's true. Yeah, the flavor is honestly better. So always start by cutting in between the chicken breast and the leg right down the side. And then the hip bone is like right here. So your knife might get caught. So I always just kind of slice right under there to begin with. And then that really opens it up. And then we still have to get the bone out of the socket to be able to cut that leg off. Yeah, the big chicken packers just inject sugar water in the chickens to make them plumper. And that's why there's always like so much water and juice that comes out. I definitely believe that. Like there's so much stuff that they don't have to tell us like what they're doing when they process food. It's kind of scary. all about getting the bang for your buck. I mean, somewhere along the line, they lost the quality and just went for quantity instead, which is terrible. And to get our dark meat off, we're gonna have to debone the chicken leg. So that's gonna be a new thing for you guys today. I don't think I've done that on stream yet before. Yeah, I don't want to pay for water when you buy meat. Yeah, plus, you won't get the man boobs. Exactly. Well, it's so true. So cut down either side of the breastbone. We're gonna be taking the skin off of all the meat today, just so you guys know. But we can reserve that with the chicken carcasses that we put aside. 
because there is a lot of fat, which means there's a lot of flavor in chicken skin. So cut all the way down your little wishbone there in the middle. Use the country chicken, which is a little hard, but it's way tastier. Yes. Yeah, you know what? I think I can get a line on local souk chicken from work. So I might actually end up getting a bunch of local chicken pretty soon here. Depending on the price, I guess. But I know that they're going to taste better. So there's our chicken breast. We'll take the skin off afterwards. Let's keep working on the other side here. See that the wishbone is trying to be a pain in the butt. It kind of snapped there. Sometimes it is broken, but you can easily take it out of the meat. I'm going to do it after I take this chicken breast off though, just because you don't really want to tear that meat up too much. Mind you, we will be slicing it up today anyways, so it won't matter as much as if you were leaving the breast full. Is there a certain brand of organic produce I prefer from Costco? What is the farm here in BC that does like the cucumbers and the tomatoes? Let me check. Because we get organic BC stuff, which is from Howlings. So this is the brand I use. Howlings. And they also make those cherry tomatoes that I use quite often. Really, really good stuff. Okay, so there is... Our chicken carcass, I'm not gonna use the wings today. We can just pack this up into our freezer bag. Yeah, I really wanna get some chickens. Oh crap. I just don't know if we have enough space. I mean, there's people down the road that have <laughs> chickens and goats. So even though we're not really in the country, like we're still in a subdivision, still really like wild and free out here, which is what I love. You always hear the farm animals, but it's not stinky. <laughs> That's the bonus. You had 150 chickens. Whoa, that's crazy. Most of the time you just quarter the chicken when it's whole. Okay. So you're gonna learn a little bit. Deboning chicken legs is awesome. If you wanna do like a nice rolled stuffed chicken leg with dark meat instead of using chicken breast. That way you'll have a little bit more flavor in there. Hey, Herbalizer, what's going on? Welcome back. It's good to see you. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Okay, so pop, pop our sockets. Not pop and lock it, just pop the socket. <laughs> you use chicken thighs 98% of the time. Sammy would be so proud of you. I am well, thanks for asking. Did all of the stuff I needed to do today. Oh, I guess I have some other news, guys. Is Sammy found an awesome cheap car for what it is. It's like a newer Ford Focus from somewhere downtown where he was working. The guy is like super rich, doesn't need it anymore. This guy has a plane and stuff. So he's just trying to get rid of this car because he doesn't live here most of the time. So we might be getting a new car if everything goes well. I just got to take out a loan, I guess. 
So I made the appointment at the bank. But the car's not available until mid-September anyways. So I got a little bit of time to set myself up. I think that'll be good for us though. Because, I mean, the car that we have, it's good. But it's not super reliable. And we want to do some road tripping and stuff like that. So you don't want to go on road trips if you don't really trust the car that you're going to use for it. So I think that's important that we get something that is more reliable. And Sammy says he always worries when I go drive somewhere in the car that we have now. So it'll be less stressful. The poor bird, yeah, RIP chicken. You died for us. Thank you for that. And by then you'll be able to afford the loan payments from just the Twitch. Not quite yet. But you know what? I was saying to Sammy the other day, I'm like, you know what? Like I'm finally living comfortably. Like I'm not stressed about money. The whole time that we were in Vancouver, I was always stressing about money just cause rent was so expensive. Like you really don't have much left over if you're making a chef's income, let's say, or a cook's income to like enjoy your life. Like you're always just trying to penny pinch wherever. And that's not that fun, especially when you're younger still. So I'm happy for the changes that we have made in the past year. And definitely excited for the future. So there is our two chicken carcasses that I'll be putting into the freezer. But my hands are still dirty, so we might as well just start to process the rest of our chicken. I'm gonna put the slices in this big bowl and then that way that will marinate really nicely. So we can start by taking the skin off of the breasts. Is the focus a manual? No, that's the only thing. I was like, is it standard, Sammy? Because my dad made me learn standard for my first car. That's the one thing I miss out here, just with all the hills and stuff that we have. It'd be really fun to drive standard. But you know what? It's loaded with everything. And for 10 grand, it's honestly a steal. It only has 27,000 kilometers on it. And it's a 2012. Oh, thanks, Chance. Yeah, you really don't know what you're going to find in life. Like, we weren't planning on getting a new car. But it's just too good to pass up. And the timing might not be perfect, but usually when you work and really want something, everything will go well in your favor. Tommy wants a wingy. <laughs> This chicken looks fresh. Yeah, we just bought it yesterday. I'm pretty happy with this quality, the organic stuff. You have over 60,000 on a 2011. Yeah, I know, that was the thing is like, this car has barely been driven. Hey, Dante. Welcome in, how are ya? Yeah, that is exactly where we were at as well, Death. Like, exactly. And now we're paying like, with all of our bills and rent, the same price that we were paying for just rent in Vancouver. So hell yeah. Will the bank give you a loan? Well, I'm going for more of like a line of credit thing, which I'll have one of my parents co-sign for me because they trust me, thankfully. Yeah, send you the chicken skin so you can crisp it up. Okay, so we're getting into the leg. So where I always start is your bone that's sticking out here. Slice down and then the other bone is going this way. So slice that way 
and then cut around that knuckle to free the skin up. Hello, Liz. How are you? Your grandma had a 1993 Mazda with 30K. What? That is epic. Car laughs forever. You're back. You're in bed and you can't sleep. Okay, man. Just relax and let the chicken butchery put you to sleep. Self-medicate with carbs. Well, that's better than drugs, I guess, or alcohol. I'll, I'll allow this, Liz. You gotta cut around the leg here because of all the tendons. So now this is all opened up, you can see. And now all we have to do is just scrape along the bone on all sides to free up that meat. And then you'll be able to take that whole bone out. And then because there is those tendons that are a little bit more tough, we're gonna work on those and try to take them out. Because those can stay a little bit chewy if you don't cook the chicken for like a long period of time to break that down. Because we're quick cooking it today on either the grill or under the broiler, you definitely wanna take those out. You don't want any chewy stuff on your meat skewers. Okay, we're getting there. Sometimes you can even just use your hands to pull the meat away if it's really nice and tender and fresh. But a sharp knife is definitely needed as well. And then when I get to this point, see how I only have this little bit left on the knuckle? I like to just hold both ends and just cut around that last little bit. And so that's gonna go into our freezer bag as well. Not very much meat left on those bones, but since there's knuckles on there, that's really good for stock. And so now if I flip this over, that is our deboned chicken leg. So you got your thigh and drumstick on there. And then we can see the little tendons just sticking out at the end. So most of the time you can kind of just pull them out by sliding your knife kind of along them. Like that. Hey, Thunder, how are you? Weed is a herb. Is it actually an herb though? Or do people just call it that? I don't think it would taste that good to like use as an herb in cooking. That's the thing. Okay, I think that's good for the tendons. We can pick more out when we slice this up later. But as long as you get like four or five out, I think that's all that matters. So now the rest of the chicken skin has got to go. I have a tendency. <laughs> Starting with those puns, I like it. Man, I don't even remember really dissecting animals in high school. I think we did one. Maybe we did a frog or something in biology, but yeah, I have got some really good dissecting skills for sure. <laughs> Thanks for noticing, Liz. Would have been a good doctor, but hey, here I am. Okay, three more legs to go. Are organic chickens expensive in Canada? So for these two chickens, which are pretty good size in my opinion, they are around $25. But think about this, if you're gonna go out to eat somewhere pretty nice, let's say, not too cheap, 
You're going to be paying around 20 bucks for one chicken breast at a restaurant. So buying them whole makes so much more sense. Cooking them with the bone in is a lot healthier for you. You'll get more flavor. But then you also do have the option to take the bone out and prepare it however you want. So that is why I like to buy whole chicken. I guess the only thing is if you have the time to do all of this yourself. But it really doesn't take long. I'd rather take the time to do this than spend the money. And that's probably the issue with a lot of people in the world is they just don't have that time. But I think anyone can learn cooking skills because it's really just about practice. Let's cut around our knuckle here. Raw chicken was a delicacy. Yeah, I don't think I could do the texture of the raw chicken. Thanks for the follow. Siak. I like that username. Siak. You love how well I clean everything I make. Well, it's important to not waste by leaving a lot of meat on the bone, right? And that, I think, comes from working in a restaurant as well. You want to get the most bang for your buck. Okay, so there's our next chicken leg all done. Looks great. That in bag. Eating out is such a ripoff. Totally is. At El Pollo, you get a whole meal for seven bucks. Well, then you're winning, Thunder. That's great. So I see I left a little piece of knuckle on here. Definitely want to trim that off. You probably paid 30 for some tilapia. That's expensive. Okay, we got a pretty big tendon here. Definitely want to take out the bigger ones. It's a bit pricier than what you have, Opterix. You pay about 13 to 14 for an organic chicken. Well, I paid 25 for two, so I think it's very similar. Because I used to pay 25 for the three not organic chickens. But I just noticed the quality really continuing to suffer like every single week that I bought it it just got worse and worse and I was like I don't like this anymore I'd rather pay more and have less okay skin off You're not a big fan of peanut sauce? Yeah, food should be free. Well, it can be free, Thunder, totally. That's why I grow my own. Like my grocery bills have gone down so much since I started the garden. How come you don't like peanut sauce? I love peanut sauce. Okay, two more guys. Yeah, just a little bit cheaper. Why am I making it boneless? Because where you need to slice it up and put it onto skewers, thunder. Or sorry, helicopter. What's up, helicopter? You guys are both gray. I can't keep up. <laughs> like pineapple on pizza, but with jalapeno sweet and spicy. 
Yeah, sometimes I put banana peppers on a Hawaiian pizza. The spice is nice. <laughs> Say I was going to jail for what? 40 years? <clears throat> One meal before going to jail. What would it be? Oh, man. It's too hard to decide. Like only one meal with one course. I'd probably still choose pizza. <laughs> Is that bad? I just love it too much. Organic equals free range? Good question, man. I don't know, that's the thing. Let's see. I mean, it should be, shouldn't it? I don't know what it says on the package. It did list some stuff. Organic, grain-fed, raised in low population densities. Raised in low population density. So I think that's pretty close to free range. It doesn't mean that it's free range though. It just means that they're not as crowded as the regular ones, which is good. Because some of those chicken farms are terrible. Yeah, exactly, Thunder. Pineapple pizza, so good. Peaches though on pizza, really good. Thunder is drunk. The aroma or aftertaste of peanut sauce. Interesting. I find it very interesting how different everyone's palate is. I don't know if those things like start when you're young or what, but it's very cool how we all kind of like and do not like certain things. Okay, grab those tendons. If you grow up eating peanut sauce, you will love it. Maybe, or maybe you'll just have eaten it too many times and you're like, I don't wanna see this stuff anymore. The palate starts with all the sugar, yet seriously a drug. Sugar for sure a drug that they just allow. Imagine how people would act without having sugar. The world would go nuts. Maybe that's how the apocalypse starts. They ban sugar. People just go wild go into withdrawal. Yeah, it's an acquired taste for sure. <laughs> you can confirm peanut sauce does not get old. Just don't eat more than once a week. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. other tendons here that I want to get rid of too. You stopped buying Quaker Oats and Cheerios. 
How come? Yeah, back to sleep. Get to bed, Olmet, and stay thick. A new study found it contains five or ten times the safe amount of glyphosate. Glyphosate? What's that? Glycosate. Man, what are these chemicals even? This is the last chicken leg. And then we're going to get to slicing. Thanks for standing by me, guys. Just some uh, casual butchery on a Monday. Is it a lot derived from glycogen? Well, if it was derived from glycogen, I didn't think it would be that bad for you. All cereal contains an ingredient from paper thinner. What? Word up. I guess we eat paint thinner now. That's insanity. I mean, there's definitely some packaged foods where I've read the ingredient label and been like, I don't know like five of these ingredients. So I don't think I'm gonna buy that. I like to know what I eat. Yeah, glycogen, glucose, it's all the same. Oh, totally, Nescova. I am so with you on that. And it's so much fun growing your own food. Like, it's very rewarding feeling. Growing food yourself and then, like, actually getting to harvest it and use it. Love it. Okay, let's take our skin off. You've stopped buying packaged foods. Hey, welcome in, Jim. Just saw you in here. Yeah, I try to not buy very much packaged foods. I think the only thing I really buy that's processed is maybe potato chips. Everything else I try to make myself. Hey, we did it, fam. We did it. I don't know what that thing is, but I'm gonna take it off too. Looks like just a piece of fat or something. Okay, that looks pretty clean. So I'm going to switch from my boning knife, I think, to the bigger knife, just because it'll be easier for slicing. And then I will be putting the meat into the bowl and we'll make up our marinade after this. You read ingredients on a container of potato salad. It's more like a novel. Like how? It's only potato salad. How much different stuff can you put into there? Okay, so I think I'm just gonna slice the chicken leg down this way, nice long strips. Cause we need to put it onto skewer, right? It's always better to have 
long pieces to weave onto there. And it's actually holding up together pretty well. So I'm happy with that. Even if it does fall apart a little bit, that is totally okay. It's really easy to put anything onto a skewer. And this is gonna taste amazing with fresh chicken. Yeah, hire me as a personal gardener. Yeah, I don't know how, but I spent like an hour and a half outside this morning in the garden, just putzing around. Cause I kept just finding stuff to do. I was like, oh, I need to do this. Oh no, I need to do this. It was craziness. Hey Rush, how are you? Subway is far from fresh. Uh, yeah. I don't know how I feel about Subway. You can definitely like tell that their stuff is processed because it really does not taste that fresh. Why am I using a samurai sword? Because the length of this knife is called a scimitar. First off, the length of this knife is really great for slicing things. Makes it a lot easier. And this is a knife that is used quite often in butchery. It's not even that expensive. I've been good, Rush. Had a good weekend at work. Yesterday was a really fun day at work. I got to start by picking a big bucket of blackberries and then I blended them all down, strained the seeds out, and then made some blueberry blackberry sorbet mix for dessert at work. Made a simple syrup for it as well. And then after that, I got to work on making some sour cabbage for sauerkraut. So I processed like three big heads of cabbage, kind of did them fine chopped, and then did a salt kind of brine for them, two and a half percent. And then it'll take about three weeks for it to ferment naturally. So just salt and whatever liquid comes out of the cabbage, which is a very traditional way to ferment it like that. I've been learning a lot of stuff at work. So that was really fun. I think that's the only kind of new thing I did at work lately. Man, this chicken tender is gonna be the best part of the saute. Cheeseburger. Okay, what did you eat after school? And then your friend got food poisoning? What? Yeah, honestly, Thunder, I feel the same. It's like so happy that I found a job that I really, really enjoy. a little piece of bone. I got it. Definitely don't want that on our chicken skewer. No bones, guys. The only bones we want is the ones that we play roulette with. Italian BMT. Oh, okay, you guys in the States get food poisoning much more often than I think we do in Canada which is kind of terrifying. <laughs> yeah, big man thing. That is what BMT stands for.
thanks for posting those things, Rush. I didn't post anything on my Instagram all weekend. I was bad. But I don't do much cooking on the weekend. And while I'm at work, I don't really take too much pictures of stuff. I don't like to have my phone out at work because it can be distracting sometimes. Okay, this is the last chicken breast. So we are gonna get eight portions of chicken saute, which is good. So we have enough for dinner tonight and then enough for lunches tomorrow. If you go to bad places and don't cook your own food. Yep, the risk is there. spritz down this stuff with some disinfectant and then we can move on to marinating this. Woohoo! I would say like minimum an hour that you want to marinate. I don't know if I would go 24 hours. I'd say like one to four hours. Okay, moving on to the marinade. So we need lemongrass, some vegetable oil. What I'm using today for lemongrass is this paste stuff. I bought this kind of in the winter, I guess, when lemongrass wasn't really a thing. And I just find this lasts longer, but I do have a lemongrass plant outside that has been growing like crazy, so. Hopefully pretty soon I'll be able to harvest from it. How many pounds of bone meat do you typically get from a chicken? I mean, I guess it depends on the size of the chicken. For sure. I don't really know how to estimate that one for you. But let's say if we're getting eight portions of meat, typically a portion is five to six ounces. So times that by eight. So if you're doing five ounces, you get like 40, whatever that is in pounds. That's the way that I'm gonna calculate it because this is pretty accurate for eight portions. It depends on how hungry you are. Okay, next thing that we need, obviously this is a really important one, fish sauce. And then a little bit of light brown sugar here some freshly squeezed lime juice, which I had a little container left over in the fridge, so I'm gonna use that up. I do have a whole lime as well, but I would like to keep that for our sauces later. There's something weird on the cutting board there. You try to soak for four, yeah, I'm a risk taker, it's true. And then we also need some garlic. Got a nice little head there. Some ground turmeric. So this is gonna make your chicken a really nice yellow color. And then ground coriander, which is the seed from cilantro. So that's gonna go well. And then if you want to, just a little bit of hot sauce. So it says sriracha here. So it says to put everything into the blender. I don't know if this recipe will fit in the blender and actually blend up. Because our lemongrass is already 
blend it up. So I think that's the thing that they're going for. I think if we just mix everything in a container and pour it over, we'll be good to go. I, oh, I can use the garlic press for to mince the garlic. That's already done. And there's not too much else involved here. Feeling good about that. And we need, so I'm gonna double this recipe. So what I think that we're gonna get from one stalk of lemongrass, probably use most of what's left in here. You've only used lemongrass in food a few times. It's so nice. I love the flavor. It's like what makes Thai food, I think. Fish sauce is funky stuff, smells funky. Yeah, but it adds amazing flavor. I agree with you. I think it's pretty underrated as far as it goes for like being a really awesome seasoning. Kind of similar to soy sauce in that fact. Just the fish sauce is a lot more earthy, right? And pungent. But most times you can't even tell that the fish sauce is in there. Like it's not that fishy of a flavor if you balance it out with the other ingredients. I think that might be all I'm going to get out of this little tube. Oh, there we go. So now next time I need lemongrass, I'll have to use stuff from outside. You love Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, that's a crazy name. No sriracha in the peanut sauce. What are we going to use to make it spicy then? Yes, fish sauce and ramen broth. Great way to kind of cheat if you don't have any bonito or like dried tuna flakes. Okay, let's try and get into this garlic. It's rough. Holy smokes. So it says two teaspoons of minced garlic. I think I want to use both of these cloves though. I want to go pretty garlicky. And I know that this garlic is not that strong, so I can push it a little bit. You guys know I always like to smash my cloves. makes it easier to peel. Oh, did the camera move? I think so. Prodigious! Only able to lurk tonight. Don't even feel bad about that. Thank you for the biddies, and I hope you are well. Fresh chilies are all that's needed. Okay, so I do have high red chilies that we can use for the peanut sauce. We can do that in dog. Gonna go make rice. Well, that's a good snack. There's definitely worse things you can snack on helicopter. Whoa, it's National Bacon Day. How did I miss this? Does Herbalizer know this? Apparently he is like a bacon fiend. You bake some good, good bacon with black pepper and red pepper flakes. Mmm. Alton Brown said so, well then it's for sure real. I love Alton. Sriracha has such a distinct flavor that it can ruin other things. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's really garlicky is what I find. Like they've definitely made it super garlicky lately. Okay, there we go. Yum. I think we'll have to use the garlic press again later on for one or two of the sauces. So I'm just gonna give it a little rinse first. 
for now. So we need four tablespoons of fish sauce, as well as four tablespoons of vegetable oil. So I'm gonna use grapeseed oil. I think peanut oil would be great for this too, but I think it's maybe just a little bit too expensive to use in this method of cooking. And so the oil here in the marinade is obviously gonna coat the chicken. And if you're grilling it, it's gonna help it not stick to the grill. But it's also gonna add a little bit of moisture to the chicken breast too. Well, I know it seems like quite a bit of oil, but it's needed for sure. Definitely quite a bit of fish sauce too, hey? But like I said, when it's mixed with these other ingredients, it's not that powerful. It just has a really strong aroma. We need four tablespoons of sugar I'm gonna do that after though, and I'm gonna carry on with our wet stuff. So two tablespoons of soy sauce. So that's our salt here. So you don't need to add any extra salt to begin with to our chicken. This will definitely help with the seasoning. Prop that up there, or I guess I can put it in there too. Get our citrus juice. So we need two tablespoons worth. I don't know if I have that, but it'll be close. Oh, just. Okay, now on to our dry. So our sugar and our spices. sugar to balance out both the citrus juice and the soy sauce and the fish sauce, the salty stuff. Now our turmeric and coriander, so two teaspoons of each. I'm just gonna measure in my hand because I can. Seems a little bit packed down. That looks good. So turmeric's a really strong yellow dye as well. So keep that in mind that it can stay in your hands really quickly. Coriander is going to give a really nice, fresh flavor to our chicken saute. <laughs> yeah, guess we know what Opteryx is making for dinner. Okay, and I'm not going to make this spicy. I'm just going to make the peanut sauce spicy. So we just need to mix up this marinade and then pour it over the chicken. So the sugar should dissolve pretty easily in this.
smells really, really good. It's definitely funky. I think some ginger would be good in this too, if you wanted to. Big fan of ginger for sure. Okay, that looks well mixed. Pour this over. Give the chicken a little stir. To make sure it's fully coated. Make sure everything is nicely submerged in the marinade. <laughs> the sound of this, not that appealing. I'm sorry. Smells really freaking good though. And we will say goodbye to this for about an hour and a half, I think. I'm just gonna go put this into the other fridge. And then we are moving on to, I think we'll do up the veg for the salad roll before we make the pickles, just to make sure that it is done. We don't wanna be rushing too much towards dinner time because pickles aren't really a priority. The rest of dinner is though. So be right back. on Twitter for the bacon you made said it was bacon day or something but if someone says it's bacon day you don't need any other reason oh my god freezer's full wasn't expecting that okay so into our vegetables for our salad rolls. So let me just flip to the recipe quickly. So here are some of the things that they use. So we'll start at the top, I guess. So there's carrot, radish. In that other bowl is zucchini. What do they got? Cherries. They got some longer zucchini there. Peach, peas. Got some shredded cabbage, which I do have. Beets and those beans that we definitely have and some blueberries. You had some uncured applewood smoked bacon in the freezer, yum. That'd be good. Okay, so they just call the dipping sauce that we're making Asian sauce, but it is Nguoc Sham. It's the Vietnamese dipping sauce with more fish sauce <laughs> to compliment. And we also need for our salad rolls is the rice paper. So this is what it looks like in the store here. You get a lot of sheets to roll with. So these will last quite a long time. And per person, I would say two to three salad rolls minimum if you're going to be making a bunch up that's a good way to estimate your portion especially if there's nothing else really with dinner <laughs> posh is barking at the door oh it is her dinner time maybe we gotta feed doggo first come on <laughs> Ready for this guy's watch. Posh, come here. Do you want food? <laughs> oh, 
She's going to show me where the food is, guys. I'm just gonna go feed her real quick, and then we'll start on our veg prep. A lot of slicing and dicing. So Dante, if you're still in here, you will be very happy. carrots, a cucumber, we got green and red cabbage, we got our multicolored beans, Some people also cook rice noodles to put into the mix with the veggies, but I don't think we need the rice noodles. I just like the rice paper on the outside. Am I going to walk it? All the Instagram pics look like the plate is on the floor. No, that's just a little placemat that I use by the door. It does look like carpet though, doesn't it? I might put the plate on the floor because honestly that's where the best lighting is is by the patio so I just like put my placemat down put the plate on top <laughs> it looks like a carpet yes it looks hella artsy yeah exactly Liz that's what we were going for okay so I'm gonna chop all the veg and arrange it kind of like how they did so just on a sheet pen I think is gonna be the best and that way everything will be laid out in front of us and we can kind of just pick and choose what we want to put into the salad rolls. Here we are. And obviously the veg for the salad rolls, it has to be cut pretty delicately. It can be really hard to eat. So everything is going to be sliced like really nice and thin. So it does take a little bit of prep time to do this. I look radiant. Thanks, Thunder. I appreciate that. No, I'm not stir frying it. Everything is fresh. Even the beans, like it's all just raw vegetables. So this was the last of the beans I picked today. I don't think we'll need all of them for sure not. This guy got really big. It's fat. Look at those beans. Hey, view. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah, I decided to put my hair up today. Wasn't feeling it. I'm gonna pick out all of the nice thin beans first to put into our salad rolls. You don't want it to be too, too chewy. So the younger vegetables are always going to be your better option. I think that's good. 
You don't need too much of everything. Viun, how was your weekend? And I will be washing some of this stuff. Definitely the radishes, but I don't even think we need all of these. Maybe those three. It's going great over here, Vyun. We just finished marinating the chicken saute. We don't have to wash the cube. We don't have to wash the cabbage and the carrots will be peeling. So we only have to quickly wash these two things. How to give points. Yeah, I don't know why that command doesn't work. Because that is the right command. Yeah, Chance, I think the smoke just got worse here too. Like, it actually looks hazy when I look outside. Usually it was just like hazy in the basin where the smoke would kind of settle in there, but it got bad for some reason. Elvin, how are you? <laughs> what I looked like three years ago? What are you talking about? Oh yeah, the smoke actually gives me a little bit of a headache when it gets bad like this. Like I noticed it right away. So I'm just going to take the stem part off of the beans. No one wants to eat the bean stem. Come on guys. Creeping on my Instagram, I love it. Yeah, don't be fooled by me. I was a bodybuilder. I'm innocent now, guys. The muscles are no more. Or they're just hiding underneath. A good blanket of fat. <laughs> Thinly slicing these radishes. I would recommend a mandolin if you feel like you're not able to slice them almost paper thin with a knife. But I like to practice my knife skills. So I'm going to attempt this with my knife. You were just playing, Matt. Elvin's like, okay, I will give you some points. And I guess the thing about the salad rolls with the rice paper is you can see through it, right? So you wanna make sure that everything you see through the rice paper wrapper is prepared really nicely. So it's kind of like art, in my opinion. Just trying to improve your chance of Sammy's back salt. So bad. 
Yeah, points are meant to be lost. To the poverty wheel. Four tickets, boom. You're like, hey, where did those bones come from? From trivia, you crushed it. Doggo is here for some radish snacks. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have said anything, Matt. Now he's buying tickets. The struggle. You might be back. Okay, sounds good, dude. Have a good little commute, whatever you're doing. Okay, let's get into our Cougar. Three out of three losses. It must be Monday then. I think we want to obviously cut our cucumber into lengths that will fit into the summer roll. And I'm not gonna cut it in half. I just need to be able to take the wrapper off. And we're actually going to shave this with a vegetable peeler. So it's really, really nice and thin. So just hold your cucumber and just start doing that. And I don't mind the seeds in the cucumber. I really like it because that adds that really nice, juicy part of the salad roll. Luckily, this cucumber is like the exact width of the peeler, maybe a little bit more. But I'm just going to turn it like this and do the other side. You liked trivia? Good. I'm glad you guys like that. Because even I have fun doing that with you guys. I like to teach. You know this. Get off of the peeler. The theoretical 50-50 odds. You will win one in six. That's not that good, is it? Okay, whatever snacks you have left over, get your veggies in. You were pretty confident you'd clean up in it. Yeah, I knew you would. You and Lemon are the pros. Nice view, nice. So that's what we're looking at so far. Our radish, beans, and cuke. Since we have the peeler out, might as well do our carrot next. We don't want to portion the avo too early. Unless you want to put some like citrus juice over it to help with the oxidation. <laughs> you guys. The pun masters are here. same thing with the carrot is we're just going to keep peeling it 
into nice thin strips. But maybe we'll not do the strips that long, right? Because we still need it to fit into the rice paper when we wrap. Vegetable peel is so handy for this. It's the cheater way of like mandolining, I would say. But you do end up with something like a weird shape like this. So just make sure that you will use up the scraps that you have left over after preparing something like this. something really quick to make so when it comes to the rice paper we'll obviously need to soften it up so it is pliable to be able to roll stuff in it but you don't even need boiling water you just need some hot water so just get a big pot get your water hot and then you just dip the rice paper in there to soften it a really really quick process. I think that's more than enough carrots. Cutting corners, showing you guys the tricks. Those are doggo snacks. Come here. You and you're gonna be away. Oh, you're gonna be at your in-laws. You have your own office? That is awesome. They won't mind you disappearing. That's good they understand. Okay, our cabbage. I'm gonna do a little bit of each one. Cause look at this one. It's starting to oxidize. So we gotta trim that off. That's not good. <laughs> Elvin surrendered enough bones to keep the restaurant awash in stock for a year. Boom. It's perfection. So I'm going to cut this side off. Obviously trim as little as you can so you don't waste too much. We also need to cut the core out if we're going to be slicing this. So we need to keep cutting until that piece is no longer visible because it's really tough, but Doggo loves it. So you can definitely still eat it. It's just not the best. Oh, you are already there. Cool of you. The chipmunk said to the rabbit, why are you so sad? You don't have a care in the world. The rabbit replied, the problem is I don't have a carrot in the world. That would be a sad rabbit. No carrots? They actually like you. <laughs> And you like me back. Consider yourself lucky. I guess in-laws are a serious thing, aren't they? Okay, so slicing our cabbage as thin as possible. I think I will use the mandolin for this. It just worked so well last time we did that. So as thin as possible. Let's see. 
what we end up with. Oh yeah, that's great. Very delicate. <laughs> Blame view. <laughs> It is its own hashtag now. Vume. Vune is on auto blame. Okay, I think that's enough for that color. And we'll do the green. You brought the keyboard with you that you usually use for your cooking streams. Pilled soy sauce on it. R.I.P. I'm just taking this outer leaf off because it's not that nice looking. Don't blame the view. He's innocent. He's naive and innocent. How could you even blame him? Guys, are you freaking out right now because I don't have the guard on the mandolin? Does it bug you? Character assassination. <laughs> Typical Elvin. Okay, perfect view. Thank you for that trust. I appreciate that. This looks so good. Okay, what is left? Not too much. The tray actually looks beautiful. So many nice colors. I think I'm happy with those options. I don't know, how do you guys feel about putting the fruit into there? I have some peaches that might be ready. I don't know if I wanna waste a peach to put it with vegetables. Peach is probably just better on its own. So this is what we're looking at. How good does this look? Salad roll prep. Done. And then we'll just put our avo right there for later. What kind of knife is this? This is a shun. So it's a Japanese knife. He was playing with mandolin blades. Okay, I don't play with the blades. Why does it have the pits on the side? So that when you chop stuff, it doesn't stick. So that's why it's pitted like that or hammered. <laughs> Many things from him are cringe. Hilarious. Nike, that is amazing, dude. You're just killing it. Okay, we got our carrot. Two cabbages shaved. Cucumber. Nice little beans and our avo and sliced radish. So we'll just put that aside for now. I am so happy with how that turned out. We just need to put some mint on there still, which I have here in the bag. And I'll take out the nice big pieces. So we can only put like nice, two nice leaves in there. Ah, burning yourself. I mean, that's something that is bound to happen when you play with fire in a kitchen. <laughs> okay, I took out that much mint. It's more than enough for sure. 
Maybe I should actually take a photo of that for the gram. Megalbyte. Megalbyte. Thanks for the follow and welcome in. How are you? Oh, the guys are already on their way. That's good. Don't mind me. It's pretty cool having the picture of what we're making in front of me and then me taking a photo of what I prepared my own way. It wasn't easy. The, f the servers thought you've been working there for a while and didn't think you were a rook. Then you crushed it. That is awesome. Gotta gain that respect, man. That's awesome, Michael. Yeah, I've been told that I'm pretty relaxing to watch while I cook. That's how it should be. It shouldn't be a stressful thing. Believe me, sometimes it is if you work in restaurants, but at home, it should be really enjoyable. And I am well today. Okay, so let's check out our list. So we marinated our chicken. We haven't made the pickles yet. We did our salad roll prep. So now on to our two sauces, both the peanut sauce for our chicken saute, and then the nuak sham or the Asian sweet and sour sauce for our salad rolls. But both of those sauces are great with the salad rolls and the saute. So always a good idea to put both of them on the plate if you feel like one isn't enough. The optics in chat look pretty bad. I mean, Liz is here. She definitely was here. I don't know what she's doing. Yeah, showering, obviously. Yeah, what is Liz doing? Showering. <laughs> Too good. Okay, so the peanut sauce is from Serious Eats. It says it makes about one and a half cups. I feel like that's enough. I think so. So we'll only make one times that recipe. But I think before I attempt that, I'm just gonna put some of these veggies away. Kind of clear off the area. We got a lot of lurkers in here and I'm okay with that. It's pretty awesome like not having to have a mod in chat at all times because of the crazies. So thanks for being awesome, guys. I know I'm getting so close to 1K. I'm really excited. It's going to be a fun stream for sure. Already got a little plan for it. got a little plan for it. The banana suit. I forgot about that. <laughs> Your 100th follower milestone was cruelly taken away from you. You wanted to shower that person with digital love and affection and even a small poem. What happened? Okay, so obviously we need peanut butter. It calls for creamy or smooth peanut butter, but I am a big fan of crunchy and having those little peanut bits in the peanut sauce. So we're using crunchy peanut butter and I would always choose the natural stuff because it's not loaded with sugar either. It's just peanuts and salt blended together. <laughs> 
But I think first, I'm just gonna take a quick bathroom break and then we will carry on. So sit tight, guys. is really easy to make. You don't even have to do it into a blender. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thunder! With the gifted sub from Opterix. Hell yeah! Thanks, Opterix. You know that's appreciated. <laughs> Honestly, you're crazy. I love it. This camera angle is bugging me. I don't know what happened, but... It is a little bit sideways. I'll fix that afterwards. Man, you're not a crunchy peanut butter person. Yes, thank you, Opterix. <laughs> you gotta keep up with death. Man, you guys are out of control. <laughs> Turns out your hundredth follower was a bot, so you wrote a haiku instead that went along with the lines of bot. You suck. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, you have to. You have to take photos when you get the cookies. It's a must. Okay, half a cup of creamy peanut butter is what we need. And you know what I'm going to use to measure this? This is honestly the greatest thing. Is this Pampered Chef little measuring cup. So I love it because if you're using something like peanut butter that's sticky or honey, you can just push it out of the bottom and then you don't have to worry about like trying to use a spatula to get it all out. If only you had a small gnome, you would put the cookie in its hand. That is so cute. So literally all we have to do is line this up. So we're at our half cup there. So I'm just gonna fill this with peanut butter and then push it out. So awesome. Pampered Chef guys, they got some pretty unique kitchen tools, I have to say. Nike, you are the small gnome. Yo, eggs, what's up, man? Look at this. Peanut butters. I just opened this jar this morning too. It took me a good couple minutes to mix the oil back in. Ah, we almost lost it. Would have been the worst. You're a gnome at all. <laughs> oh my God. The couple that your wife and I do double dates with have decided that if the EU goes to shit, you're coming to Canada. Come on over, man. Anytime. I'll be waiting. Okay. Half a cup. Dunzo. Don't let, don't let sun see this little measuring cup. Would he just do bad things to it or what? I 
I licked the spoon. It's hard to talk. She be thick. Yes, eggs. Another person that loves chicken saute. Honestly, like one of my go-to things when I was traveling in Asia. Ready? Boom. What's up? Literally nothing left on the sides. There is that little bit though underneath. Definitely gotta clean that. You made a test Jean, Jean Dua mousse, a chocolate mousse. Came out much more sweet than the sugar source. Interesting. I think that's the case though, Elvin, because I don't eat sweets that much anymore either. And I find everything is just too sweet. So because this was originally supposed to be creamy peanut butter, they do thin it out a little bit with hot water, like a quarter cup. But this stuff is pretty runny. So I think I'm gonna save adding the water until the end of the recipe, just to make sure that we don't make the sauce too watery. Yes, Snooze, you have one of those cups. Yeah, I saw Alton Brown using it actually for honey one time. Maybe peanut butter too? And I was like, that's brilliant. Okay, so what we do need, I like this part is, two tablespoons of Thai red curry paste. So I do have some here. I keep mine in the freezer and it doesn't actually freeze solid because there's so much oil in there. So that is really handy. And this is gonna add some awesome, awesome flavor to the peanut sauce. How do I wanna do this? Can I scoop it off ish? Get in there. And this is where our little bit of spice is gonna come from as well. This stuff is pretty mild in spice, so I will say that. You've been trying to use the powdered peanut butter for neatness, but we'll have to find that cup. Ah, yeah. Plus the peanut butter powder has less fat, so it is a little bit more healthy for you. Displace the shortening in water. That is so cool. I've honestly never seen that asterisk. Not even once. Okay, we need two tablespoons of sugar. So it says palm sugar or light brown sugar. It looks like we're just gonna use all of the spoons today. <laughs> so this is gonna help balance out the richness and the spice. Then it does call for sriracha. I don't know if I want to put sriracha or even if I have any in the fridge. I'll look upstairs though. I would choose, I think, sambal over that. What am I putting in the peanut butter? So far, red curry paste and sugar. Next up, I'm going to do the soy sauce. So one tablespoon of that. So that's going to add our salty and umami flavors. We don't have to add any extra salt. A tablespoon of rice vinegar. So there's our acidic component and that will cut the richness of the peanut butter. A tablespoon of freshly squeezed lime juice. So luckily I have this half lime here that I found in the fridge. Yeah, I'm my own boss. That's the best part.
Don't want any seeds in there. I'm just gonna do this whole half lime because it's pretty dry. And then it does call for a little bit of minced garlic, like I knew it would. But you don't want too much because it is raw, right? So that can be overpowering. So just a little bit. And I don't really have small cloves in the house. All of these are monster. So I'll just use a piece of this garlic and just keep the other piece in the fridge. So probably that looks like a teaspoon. Just so you guys know, there's three teaspoons to a tablespoon, if that makes it a little bit easier. for you to measure. And then I don't know if there's garlic in the Nwok Sham, but I will just leave the press aside for now. See, I would rather put the red pepper flakes in for spice than the sriracha. That's going to be a more true flavor. Does anyone else think that that little symbol says A? Got some uh, Canadian Korean chili flakes. <laughs> so it's called red pepper powder. And these flakes are really nice and floral compared to typical red chili flakes. And obviously with this huge bag, I am trying to use it up. So it says half a teaspoon, but I'm going to do a full teaspoon. Like I said, these are not as powerful. Yes, in dog. I'm happy you agree. <laughs> and then it says a scallion, thinly sliced. And then the last ingredients, it does say if you need to add a little bit of kosher salt but we will taste it before we add any more salt. Let me just grab the green onion. Place it as thin as possible. Liquid ethyl maltol. Where are you guys? You guys have gone full science. I love that. Yeah, his real name is Wiley Dufresne. Okay, let's stir this up. We'll see the consistency. If we maybe do have to add a little bit of water, I think we might. It's pretty thick. And you do want warm water. It will just help it dissolve or dissolve a lot better. 
Okay, so a quarter cup of hot water going in. I think it's gonna take all of it. If you are scared, do half at a time and see where you end up. You've been outed. Three vegan pages followed you after you followed me. What happened, Liz? <laughs> I'm innocent, I have nothing to do with this. And I love the color that the chili flakes put into this. It's so orange, it almost looks like a butter chicken sauce. It's like, I can't believe it's not butter chicken. Oh my God, the blame Kate hashtag has begun. <laughs> I think we still need more water. So you need the dip so that it can coat something nicely. But you don't want it to like really clump on there. So just keep adding your water until you got a good sauce consistency. Typically if it coats the back of the spoon nicely, you're good. Smell like coconuts, yum coconut shower things or like coconut toiletries the best okay we're getting there adding chicken stock yes it does in dog but it can also add if you have a store-bought one it will, can add some salt so be careful with that but if it's homemade, then it shouldn't really have any salt in there. I think with adding this much water though, we will eventually have to add more salt. Maybe you can substitute with a little bit more soy sauce too. It's like every time I add water, it just ends up the same consistency. I think after this one though, so that's gonna be half a cup of water. I think that's gonna be perfect. Go, go, go. Then we just gotta try it and adjust our salt levels. Looks lovely guys. I think that's perfect. really good flavors. Maybe just a pinch, like the smallest pinch of salt. The spice is perfect. I love the chunky peanut butter. Get the little hint of garlic and green onion, but it's not overpowering. The rice vinegar and the sugar has balanced out perfectly. Your place still smells like carnitas. How did that end up, by the way? And what did you use the orange aioli on? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's perfect. Yum. So all we did with the recipe was adjusted it to half a cup of hot water, but I'm using the crunchy peanut butter. And then just a pinch of salt and no sriracha. Yes, I know. I am seriously addicted to peanut sauce. Put it on all the things. Okay, onto our Noak Sham or clear Asian dipping sauce. So we still need a little bit of sugar. 
we don't have to put this into the fridge, by the way, guys. We can leave this out. If you put it in the fridge, it will firm up a bit. And since we're eating soon, it's not necessary. We'll just put this aside. Okay, so sugar. We need the zest and juice of this lime. Still need the rice vinegar. We'll need a little bit of water again. Some fish sauce. And then it says a small bird's eye chili sliced into rounds. So I'm gonna grab one of my bird's eye chilies from the freezer. And then we'll quickly mix up this stuff. My squeaky, squeaky freezer. Carnitas were super flavorful. You make it a few times each summer. The orange aioli accompanied the grilled shrimp. Yum. I'm gonna do that size chili. Actually, maybe I'll go a little bit smaller since the peanut sauce is pretty spicy already. It's not too spicy though. It's like perfect. It's there and then it's gone. Stuffed freezer. Okay, let's start with our liquids and I'll do the lime and the chili last. So, one tablespoon of sugar. It says coconut sugar here, but light brown sugar or palm sugar works just as well. The router died. Blame Vune. <laughs> so bad. A quarter cup of rice vinegar. This is definitely a vinegar based sauce. Is this going to make enough though? I think so. It's pretty deceiving how much you actually use of this. Yeah, I think you actually do blame Vigun in this case. <laughs> One tablespoon of fish sauce. Just overloading the router. R.I.P. and do the three tablespoons of water, guys. If you do it a little bit warm, it'll help dissolve the sugar. Now we're gonna get into zesting. And then I think after this, we can start to skewer the chicken so that it's ready to go. Lay it onto baking trays just in case Sammy won't be home in time. And then we have to cook it under the broiler. And then we can assemble the salad rolls once everything is prepped up. I don't think we'll get to the pickles today. Maybe tomorrow though, depending how everything goes. But the cucumbers aren't going bad, so it's not really a priority. I just thought maybe if we had time that I can teach you guys something else. So to loosen up the juice in here, it's always good to give it a little roll. You have a few red boat fish sauce, yum. I think that's gonna be the next one I get. They just charged you for your, their cheapest fish sauce. Winning. 
Boober, how are you? So good to see you back in here. And thank you for the biddies. 20% of market value. And you stole those. Coconut sugar is just coconut water with most of the water cooked out. I'm guessing so. I mean, I don't know where else they would get the sugar aspect from. Busy but good overall. That is good. I mean, that's kind of my thing is like, yeah, lots of us are busy, right? But if you're enjoying the busyness and like the hustle of everything, then that's good. Like the stress shouldn't be too high. If you're stressing, then something's got to change. Life is all about balance. So keep that in mind, my friends. One is yellow and one is green. Ah, you have separate ones. Love it. Yeah, mine is like a two-in-one that we found. At least it saves space, I guess. Okay, so now our chili. Got a slice. It's super thin. And we're going to keep the seeds in. So another little spicy sauce. Oh, I think I hear Sammy home. Maybe we will be grilling. Or it's Betty. Here we go. Boom. Now definitely wash your hand and knife off so that you don't burn anything accidentally. Like with soap, because chilies have oils that stick to everything. So you really need soap to cut those oils. Now we just got to taste this, give it a little stir and see if we need any salt. I don't think I want to make this any darker, so I wouldn't add any more soy sauce. Sugar is dissolved. Yeah. Let's give this a little try. Oh, we got a little chili in there. That's good. Maybe just a pinch of salt. I love the lime zest though. So refreshing. It's going to be amazing with those vegetables. And I think the spice will intensify over time. So it's pretty mild right now, but I think if you left this for a couple of days, it would totally get more spicy. View, <laughs> trying to fix the internet. We'll be here, man. Hey, okay, just putting a couple things in the sink. And then I'm gonna go grab the chicken. Guess what we didn't do though? Is soak the skewers. Do you think we should quickly soak the skewers, guys? I know it helps them not burn. And it also helps them not get like slivers into the meat. Maybe I'll do them for like 10 minutes. So cold water. You want something that the skewers can pretty much get submerged in. So 
So I guess then while we wait for the skewers to soak, we can get our hot water ready for our rice paper. So we're gonna have to roll those summer rolls pretty soon as well. And if you're not sure how many skewers you need, always put more in the water than you think. Because it's just water, so nothing's going to happen to them if you have a little bit extra. They'll just dry back out and you can reuse them again. Yoon says his in-laws like him and he likes them. Then he destroys the internet. Yeah, now how is it going to be? <laughs> it's never going to be the same after this. So I'm going to use a pot like this size. And I'm not going to fill it that high. because so you don't need that much water. It's not like you're boiling a bunch of pasta. You just dip the sheets in one at a time. You put the internet here in the first place. Okay, this makes more sense then. <laughs> so like filling the pot halfway up is more than enough. While that fills, I'm going to grab the chicken. got some liquid going on in there. I'm going to grab a pair of gloves out for when we do the skewers. That way my hands won't get yucky. And then we can take out the sheet pans that I think we'll need for the skewers as well. Because you only want one layer if we're going to broil this. And then we also don't want any parchment because it will burn. So keep those things in mind. It's a bowl of intestines. <laughs> I love that vegan. Yeah, let's freak them out. Jim, you're back. Welcome back. You know what I'm gonna do? Is just a little bit of cleanup right now. Just putting a couple things away, like our big oil, our soy sauce, anything that we don't need. Because then cleaning up after way easier. Just in time for cleaning yet. Yeah. We are just finishing up everything. Just about to skewer the chicken. And then we have the water going for our salad rolls. And then I want to put the salad rolls 
you can't really stack them that well because they'll stick to each other so you need like a nice kind of platter to use have <laughs> you okay see you tomorrow good luck with your interwebs what do i want to use maybe we can use this and kind of like prop the rolls up on the side and then put the sauce in the middle i think that would be good which means we got to put the sauce into something a little bit nicer I'm gonna go grab one of Betty's bowls from upstairs since we got time. Let's plate it really nice. Let's be fancy. I mean, let's look at what they did. So it looks like it's marble and wood platter that she put it on. So if you have like a nice wood tray. Oh, see, now that I am brainstorming, finding what I need. This is what we're gonna use. Yes. I only have one, but maybe the saute, the chicken will look better in that bowl. Then you can prop the skewers up on the rim so it's easier to grab. I like this, guys. Even though I just kind of brainstormed with myself. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab those bowls still. we have time. That way everything else will be easy peasy. So we'll do our Asian sauce in that one. Still got a little bit left. And then that's going, oh, don't spill it like I did. Put that on the side there. peanut sauce into this guy, which is gonna look awesome for contrast of color. So this is more like family style meal, right? Where you don't really plate things on a plate. Just put your platters in the middle of the table and let people take what they want. go. And like I said, just put that in the middle of that one. Okay, I think I'm good for letting these skewers soak. A little bit of time is better than no time. So let's get going. my gloves on and because like I said I don't know how many skewers I'm going to use I'm gonna take a little bit out just so I don't have to keep touching the skewer with my dirty chicken hands I just put those up there on our sheet pan so we don't want any cross contamination you guys with me on that Take my 
my knife out of that dangerous spot. Okay, and we might as well do our question of the day. So question today, because I used a lot of seasonal veg and stuff like that. So my question to you, or a little bit of food for thought, do you try to buy your ingredients seasonally when it's available at that time? Or are you more that person that just buys whatever is the cheapest at that time? I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on that. I'm just gonna give this an, one more mix over before I skewer it. it. Smells so good though. And so when I skewer, I always start at one end and then just weave your meat onto your skewer and don't really leave the thin end hanging off because it will just burn and then to make it cook more even I always spread it out like that did my chat die I was like where is everyone you buy cheap but splurge time to time. That is fair as well. I mean, you can only afford what you can afford, right? So you can't really feel bad about that if that's your situation. In dog, you assume if the vegetables are cheap that they're in season. That's a good one too. Because yeah, when veggies are not cheap that means that it's not really their season so they're getting shipped in from elsewhere wagra sadly you buy whenever you see a good recipe oh that's a good way to do it too i mean typically if you're doing recipes from magazines they keep their recipes pretty seasonal but if you're doing recipes from a cookbook, obviously that can vary. Okay, this is a longer skewer, so we can probably put two pieces onto here. What makes the chicken Thai? Just the peanut sauce? No. So the marinade we did on this was a mixture of fish sauce, rice vinegar, lime juice, turmeric, coriander, garlic, and I believe lemongrass. I think that's it. So lemongrass is like very much a staple in Thai cooking as well as lime juice. So it's all about like the sweet, salty, spicy kind of contrast to everything. And there is a little bit of sugar too, which helps it caramelize when you cook it. It's so good, Wegra. This is like one of my favorite Thai foods. And it's awesome in the summertime. Cause like even this chicken, if you have it left over, whether it's the day of or the day after, it's so good cold too especially if you perfectly cook it. And then obviously the salad rolls are eaten cold, so there's not a lot of cooking involved. So if you live somewhere really hot, that's good because it you don't really have to turn on an oven. It's not gonna heat your house up. Did I figure out those ingredients myself or am I referencing a recipe? I'm referencing a recipe but I do know that those are all staple ingredients in Thai food. I've just made saute a lot of times. <laughs> so it's kind of ingrained in my head. Do you guys eat Thai food a lot or is it maybe something that you don't have that often? And 
and typically the saute is grilled. If you can do it over charcoal, I would totally recommend that because it's just going to taste better. But over a gas grill, totally okay. Just looking for a little piece here to stick on the end. I don't know if I'll find it though. And I did a mixture of both chicken leg and breast today. I like the mixture of the dark meat in there. Obviously it has a little bit more flavor. And it's gonna stay more moist. Cause it's not as lean as chicken breast. Okay, there we go. The water just started boiling for my rice paper, but I'm just gonna turn that off for now until we have this skewered. There's no use wasting that energy to keep it hot. Go cards. Thanks for the follow and welcome in. You've been doing the bro meals since your meal prepping. Oh, nice. Are you uh, prepping for a show? Are you doing bodybuilding? Your chicken is just garlic, lemon juice, pepper, and salt. Cook it over a searing skillet and then meal prep it with brown rice and broccoli. Boom, done. Man, the amount of times I've had that meal in an eight month span, too many times. It's very healthy for you though. I will say that. Wegger, you should try like a Thai version of the chicken. There's nothing like really unhealthy in here. There is a little bit of oil, but you could totally subtract that out. Turmeric's really good for you as well. It's supposed to help with digestion. So that's always a good spice to add. always good learning new ways of chicken totally i mean what saved me when i was doing meal prep was actually grilling the chicken more than anything i found that that gave the most flavor even if it was just like a simple chicken with salt and pepper grilling it so good and thanks for the follow wagra welcome in chicken here. <laughs> I'll be spreading it out between the two sheet pans, but I'll just pile it all on one to start. And we'll spread it out afterwards. That way we won't get too messy yet. Salad rolls can also be a fun thing that you can do together with people is Prepare it like I did, where you have all your stuff chopped on a pan or a plate. Put that in the middle of the table with your softened rice papers and have people build their own salad rolls. Be an interactive style of meal. How am I cooking this? 
because I'm not grilling it today, I'm gonna be cooking it under the broiler. So really hot heat, and hopefully that'll give some nice color onto the outside. You get a little bit of caramelization, which is where you primarily get most flavor when you cook meat. So that is gonna be my option. But yeah, typically these are grilled. I know the skewering takes time, but I think it's important because you have much more surface area for your meat to brown up. Compared to if you just did like a whole chicken breast or a whole leg. So it wouldn't turn out the same. So many skewers, I know. But like I said, I do eight portions every time I cook so that we have enough for dinner since there's four of us and enough for lunches the next day. So no one's kind of scrambling. No one has to eat out by overpriced food. That's probably pretty mediocre. It's relaxing. Good. Hey, Indominus. How are you? I don't know if you've checked, but I gave out all of the points from trivia on Friday. So you should have a nice little influx of points in your account. I'm saving heaps doing this totally. Now, if you guys are wondering about the price of my meals, they're always less than $10 a portion. It's pretty rare to go out to eat somewhere nowadays and not pay at least $10 for a meal. So I know this takes a little bit more time, but it's so worth it in my opinion. And plus this way you know exactly what you're eating and what's going into your food. <laughs> Indominus, yep. I think Elvin, what did he buy? Four tickets today? Oh, vegan gelato. I just saw your question. Does my local pho place use MSG? I'm probably going to say yes. I haven't actually gone out for pho here yet, but it is used quite widely in Asian cookery. But you know what, guys? MSG not actually linked to like health problems and stuff that people assume it does. It does actually just intensify the flavor of the food is basically its main purpose. And I actually bought a little bit of MSG one time just to see what it actually is. Cause everyone always talks about it, but like, do we actually know what it does to the food? And it really just does intensify the flavor of the food. Around here, you'd have to do fast food or tacos to get a meal under 10 bucks. Yeah, exactly. You forgot how much the tickets are. So they're a thousand bones each. So you have enough to get two tickets if you want to today. How's Sammy? Good. Good. Ad hoc, you love MSG. I mean, I definitely don't use it in my cooking, but some restaurants, it might be surprising to you. A lot of restaurants do use it in certain things. MSG! <laughs> yeah. Your mom can't have MSG. Is she allergic to it? 
Is MSG or sugar more addictive? That's the question. I think sugar is still way worse, in my opinion. Sugar yeah, sugar is the legal version of cocaine. I would hate to see if there was like a ban on sugar in the world. The apocalypse would start. The MSG gives her headaches. It does affect some people like that, but it's pretty rare. It is the flavor enhancer. Sugar is human catnip. Yeah, that's a good one too. You hate MSG because the Knicks play there. Oh, Opteryx. Love it. Sugar is worse than cocaine. I mean, I wouldn't know. <laughs> it's super addicting. Totally. I totally believe there's an addictive quality to sugar. There is no denying that. You don't care for pork grinds? What do you mean pork grinds? Okay, I need a few more skewers. And gently take them out so I don't contaminate anything. And how are you doing for time? 5.40, awesome. So the good thing about cooking under the broiler, it doesn't take that long to heat up. And it will cook really quickly as well. Because it's very high heat. So like 500 Fahrenheit. So I would say these skewers, if we do one layer on each sheet pan will probably take around let's say five to ten minutes to get the chicken fully cooked is the word saute what you think it is like you can hear a word it may be spelled like saute i don't know please pronounce it and i may actually seize if it's what you think it is Chicken saute or saute. Some people do a hard A. <laughs> what is this word saute? If you eat it, it will blow your mind. It's delicious. <laughs> Not to be confused with the French composer. <laughs> what? See, I didn't know this. Only you, Opteryx. Bringing in that knowledge. Now we learned something new. Okay, one more skewer. And that's it for chicken. Eight portions. Done and done. But some countries do actually spell it that way as well, Opteryx. I think that's how they spell it in the Netherlands. We'll put on these little pieces of chicken too. Okay, just gonna bring that over to the sink. Do this with our sheet pans. You like anchovies? Hell yeah. I'm gonna use anchovies this week actually in the potato salad I'm making. It's gonna go with some salmon. So we want one nice layer of our chicken saute and because we're broiling it, we can't put anything paper-like on the pan to protect it because it might burn. So just keep that in mind. That parchment paper is only safe to around 400, 425 Fahrenheit. Anything higher than that, and it can actually light on fire. 
So just keep that in mind. I think I might push those together just a little bit more. The chicken is quite thin too. So that's gonna help it cook quick as well. This bigger guy on the end. Okay, I think that looks good. And we use soy sauce in our marinade. So we're not gonna add any extra salt at this point. Anchovies are the bomb. They're really good for seasoning. I mean, similar to fish sauce, I guess. So look at what the turmeric did to my glove. Just completely yellowed. So that is what I didn't want all over my hands. We will put those aside and then I'm just gonna roll up a couple salad rolls before we bake this stuff. Just so I can get a little bit of a head start. So here is my tray of vegetables that I prepped up earlier. So I got some shaved carrot, shredded cabbage, really nice and thin, some shaved cucumber, a little bit of beans, fresh, and then some shaved radish. I can cut up my avocado now since we're ready to roll and that way it won't turn brown on us. Most looks like bacon on six, kind of. What's gonna be in the giveaway? Good question. So it's for these four salts that are locally made here from the seawater. So we have a sun-dried tomato basil salt, which is awesome for salads or dressings. Sweet smoky maple, which you can do like a cheater smoked salmon with. It's really good on salmon. The salted caramel chocolate one, awesome. Pretty much on anything that has cream or dairy in it. You can also put it on your coffee. And then lemon and dill infused. So once again, really good with seafood. Also chicken would be a good one. And you have until the 31st to enter. avocado carrots turnips avocado so we got the radish carrot cabbage and I forgot the mint we got some fresh mint from the garden cucumber and beans you could also do peas you could do zucchini beet as well if you don't want cabbage you can do shredded lettuce there's lots of options how do you win that? So if you use the command giveaway, that will tell you everything you need to know. You might not have too many points to use to enter it because the points are based on how often you watch the show. So you accrue points every 10 minutes. But you can also play roulette and try to win points, like double or nothing. It's pretty fun. Okay, let's do really nice thin slices of avocado. Nice and dominus. Winning. Let's just get a spoon over here. To take our avocado up. Pachyderma, are those Thai ants? What do you mean Thai ants? Oh yeah, I do the seed that way sometimes when I feel like stabbing it. 
but when it's really ripe like this, I can usually just use my fingernail to take it out. So I'm only going to take out one of the avocados now, just depending on how much we end up using. Keep the other one there with the spoon, just in case. Yeah, relax, Indominus. Okay, so now we can go over with our round rice paper. So this is what this looks like. And these are so, so cheap. And they're actually not bad health-wise. So if you eat five of these wrappers, it's only 40 grams of carbs, which if you're a little bit of a health nut, that is not that much. So if you stuff it full of veggies, it would be really good for you. And all we gotta do is soak it in the hot water until it's pliable, which I'm just gonna turn this on for a little bit again. Just in case it's cooled down a little bit too much. And you just leave it in the water until it's really floppy. And come over to our board and spread it out. This one has a little bit of a rip in it will be a little bit gentle. The salad's going to be amazing. Yeah, I love salad rolls. So keep in mind that this is see-through, right? So you're gonna be able to see everything you put in. So it's all about presentation. So I'm gonna do the mint first, and then it doesn't really matter after that. What's up, Sammy? Do a little bit of each cabbage. What is rice paper? Yeah, it's literally rice that's been cooked and mashed together and flattened into this sheet. So it's just rice in a different form than a kernel. Let's do that. Put a couple of our beans in here. And I use the really small ones because they are raw. Some of our carrot shreds. Let's do our cukes. And then because we're gonna see this other side as well, this is where I'm gonna do the radish. So something really nice and colorful. And when you're putting it on, you want to layer it really nice too. And I think the key is also not overfilling it. CPK, what's CPK? So now the way that I roll this, I always start by bringing the sides in first, keep it nice and tight. And then bring your bottom up. And you can stretch it pretty easily without it tearing. Now keep everything tucked in. And then we're just gonna roll this shut. And rice paper is really sticky. So it's gonna stick to itself and stay shut. And I think the tighter you roll it, the easier it is to eat. So then we have something that looks like that. So there's our mint. You can't really see the radish because there's a couple of layers over it, but that's what that looks like. So now the way that I'm presenting it is with our Asian dipping sauce. I'm just gonna layer them out on the tray. So you don't really wanna stack it because it will stick to itself. California Pizza Kitchen, okay. We don't, I don't think we have that here. Indominus, you want pizza? And you had biscuits and gravy for dinner? You got all the cravings going on or what? So 
Sorry, I just need some water. Mmm, Peking Duck Pizza. Mise en place for Thai food. It's so colorful, hey? So now that we got one of those done, I'm gonna turn my broiler on. And the key thing here is that you want your top rack as close to the broiler as possible. Make sure that's moved up. Hey, this water's hot again. Let's carry on with our salad rolls. So the hotter the water is, the quicker the rice paper softens. But obviously, the more there is a chance to burn yourself, so just be careful. Am I still going to buy sea salt after microplastics were found in a majority of samples? Probably. What other salt would you be able to use? Like, where is the salt going to come from if it's not from the seawater? Oh no, guys. It's so sticky. I think also the hotter the water is, the more sticky that the rice paper gets. The struggle is real. Okay. Should we do radishes on the bottom now so that we really see them this time? I think so. I'm gonna do five, make it a little bit bigger this time. Now let's go in with our cabbages. Maybe we'll do the purple one on top. Eating salads in 2018, yeah, who does this? I know you can't make friends with salad, but they do help you live longer. I'm going to put the avocado in this one. So like two or three slices, depending on the size. Your carrots. Yeah, sea salt is still better than table salt, especially flavor wise. Get it from the salt mines. I don't know, honestly, there's a lot more chemicals in processed food that we should worry about. I know the plastics in the ocean are not good for us either, but dang, like a lot of stuff in the world can kill us these days. <laughs> okay, we really filled this one up. It might be a challenge to wrap, we'll see. This can be a what not to do salad roll. I'm gonna bring this side in first. Since it's looking a little bit risky over there. These definitely take a little bit of practice too to make them look nice. But I think that's also the fun part. So as long as your sides are tucked in, you should be able to roll it pretty easily. Because it does like to stick to itself. There we go. There's our radish one. It looks awesome. Okay. Our broiler's hot. I'm gonna put our first tray of chicken in. And let's do another salad roll. So the thing is, you just have to remember to check your chicken. Because because it's under the broiler, it can burn pretty fast.
How long did fresh vegetables usually last before going bad? Well, it depends if they're processed or not. I mean, something cut up like this, probably no more than a week, but some fresh vegetables can last like a good two to three weeks if you pack them properly. Okay, I'm gonna do the avo for presentation on this one. that and then maybe the carrot for contrast expensive tested brands will still exist but not sure it's worth over mind yeah fair enough i mean there's always going to be something controversial about what we're eating there's our beans you're sure? Yeah, it might not look that good, but it's going to taste good at least. Thanks, Optrix. Now you're craving spring rolls, but at least you have bacon. That's a good trade. Yeah, the rice paper wrap keeps it fresh. That's true. Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> what? Sammy's trying to toot during stream, and I'm shaking my head no. And he's asking me what. Okay, you know it. what. I don't think he realizes how good this microphone is. Okay, there's our avocado one. You don't have to do every one different either. I'll do them all the same if you want to save time. But I think being creative is the fun part. The rice paper doesn't stay as fresh in the fridge overnight. Like it goes kind of soggy and weird. So this isn't really something you want to make ahead for meal prep, because it just doesn't keep its quality over time in the fridge. Definitely something you want to make more fresh. Okay, what do I want to put now? The carrot, maybe? <laughs> no Reaper surprise in one. Put a Snickers in it? Oh my god. That would ruin it. Totally. <laughs> Chance. That's so bad. Put a Snickers in the rice wrapper and deep fry it? No, no, just put it in the middle as a trick. Oh. Terrifying. Let's put a little bit of beans and some more radish. Not too much is going on with the chicken in the oven yet, guys. I just checked it. It's definitely a fine line, but having like too much filling and not enough. California Reaper. Ah, like a hot chili then. No, I, I couldn't do that. Because imagine if I got it, death. Death would ensue. Sorry, Miss 
smell some caramelization there. Do you ever eat chicken frappe? No, never. You get easier to make after you make a few. It's not that bad. I really like the look of the radish on the outside, so let's do that again. And then I think I'll do mint on this one again. Do a bed of our green cabbage. And then I'm gonna do some more cucumbers. A good amount of those. And then maybe more avocado on this. We got some pop cereal. What? Let's do some carrot to finish off. What kind of pops cereal? Like Reese Puffs? Corn Pops? Tell me more. Okay, these carrots are proving difficult, guys. Stay. Corn pops. One box equals one free scholastic book. Man, that would have been heaven when I was younger. I love the scholastic book fair. <laughs> That's what it said on the box. I also did eat quite a bit of corn pops when I was younger. Looks so good. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. So this is where we're at so far, guys. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's see how these feel. We definitely don't want to overcook our chicken. just in the bottom part of the oven so it can start to warm up. Hey the fuck, you're barbecuing a chicken. Marinating over 12 hours, nice. What's the marinade? Yeah, that's the doggo walking around. She's cruising, she likes snacks. Can you see the dog? I don't know where she went. She went back outside. I think she was just checking to see if I had anything for her to eat. Yeah, typical. She's just here for the food. Nice win, Indominus. Crushing it. I'm gonna do these nice pieces of cucumber behind the mint. Cucumber and mint, great combo. Making pollo a la brasa. What is that? Peruvian spices, sounds yummy.
Yeah, she left. She left us. She went back upstairs. How do you buy a ticket? <laughs> you did it. Ask and you shall receive. You just guessed, huh? What type of dog? She is a Hungarian Vizla. So she's a bird hunting dog. If we can, let's fit some radishes on this side to finish it off. Okay, and it's starting to get a little bit of color on there. like wrap that bottom part all the way over and then kind of tuck it in. I think that's been working the best for me. Keep it nice and tight. Hungarian Vizla. Yeah, she's awesome. Really, really good personality for a dog. She's 11 now. She's an old lady. Okay, let's check this stuff. Hey, this is what we're looking at. It was looking pretty good. Definitely got some coloring on this side. The chicken is cooked. So that is great. Now I can move the other pan up to under the broiler. And that's just the four other portions. So I can plate this now while it's hot. Obviously you want to eat it. You met a dog that's 24. Dogs can actually live that long. So this is how I'm going to plate it. And this, I have the spicy peanut sauce already in there. And I thought that maybe propping the skewer up around the dish would be a good idea. I don't know if it's going to work that well, but we'll see. Or we can just pile it around like that. I think that looks good too. All right, Optrix. Thanks for everything, man. Thanks for the gifted sub. Hope you have an awesome night. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. I'm so excited for this. It's going to be amazing. So we got our mix of light and dark meat. Whatever they want. I think that's fair. Great. I do like this plating for sure. And then look at all these juices on this pan. So I don't know what to do with those. But if you wanted to save them some for something, by all means. Okay, so there's that. And here is this. So I will fill up this tray fully for sure. But we definitely need to taste test first. How do you make spicy peanut sauce? Here, let me just post you the recipe that I used. It's really good. Okay, I'm just going to take a quick photo of this first. <laughs> 
before I distract everything. Wipe off our rim. You've seen spring rolls with pork and shrimp. Oh yeah, fresh like that too. Yeah, the shrimp ones are awesome, hey? But never a salad one. Yeah, nice and fresh for the summer. So I think I'm gonna take this little guy. Got some of our leg meat on it. So let's try this by itself first. First to see if it needs any salt. I think that's perfect. So that marinade is really nicely balanced. Get that little bit of lemongrass and garlic in there. You don't really get the flavor of the fish sauce, which is awesome. I like the turmeric and the coriander. You do get that just a touch. Obviously you can tell by the color of it that there's turmeric because it's yellow. I'm gonna dip a little piece into our peanut sauce. Yum. I don't know if I'll focus for you guys. Mm, mm -hmm. The peanut sauce just takes it to a whole new level. That little bit of spice is seriously perfect. And the green onion and the garlic in the spicy peanut sauce as well. Really brings everything together. Man, I only marinated the chicken for an hour and a half. I said minimum an hour, but it really has taken on like all of the flavoring. And we also didn't overcook the chicken. Which I think makes a big difference. Cause just cause the sauce is there doesn't mean you have to like cook everything out of it. Thanks Indominus, that is very nice of you. Okay, I'm gonna get into one of these spring rolls. I think I'm gonna do this one with the carrots and such. Overcooked poultry, the worst. Got a little dip on there. Mm. Mm hmm. So that's what the inside looks like. I think we did pretty good rolling because it's not falling apart at all. The chicken breast is done. I like the little bit of Thai red chili in that Asian sauce as well. And the lime is such a great complement with the zest in there. It keeps it so fresh. So even though we didn't really season any of those vegetables, just pairing it with that sauce, with the little bit of soy sauce and fish sauce, perfect. Yeah, it's even pretty after you bite into it, totally. So that is obviously, this should not take you this long to prepare. It just takes me that long because I explain everything to you guys. So if you follow the recipes, this would probably take you around an hour to make, obviously not including the marination time for the chicken, but you could do that the night before as well. Save a little bit of time. You could also prep the sauces the day before too. Okay, we're wrapping up the stream, guys. I think, who do we wanna go visit? 
Do we want to do Bachelor Life? Or do we want to go see Robin? Uh, Chris Blackwood, birthday boy, roasts a duck. It looks pretty legit. I like roast duck. No problem, Chance. Yeah, you will see me tomorrow. Tomorrow? What are we doing, guys? Tomorrow on stream. Uh, tomorrow we're doing the spring salmon that we picked up from Port Renfrew. Pan fried with a little bit of garlic butter. We're doing a nice French style potato salad, so not creamy. And then just some braised greens with fresh herbs. You're gonna watch Robin anyways. Okay, let's go see Robin, AKA Chef de Partie, AKA fellow Canadian cooking streamer. Thanks for everything today, guys. The biddies, the subs, the follows for sure. Everything slowly adds up, so that's great. Good start to the week. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful night. Mama.